Well, when it rains, it pours. Uh, the Detroit Tigers lose worse in Game 2 than they did in Game 1. Let's talk about it all today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to you as customers. The Detroit Tigers lose game two by a score of 10 to 3. In Kansas City, we were all doom and gloom yesterday because they lost 8-3. to three. And talking about how much of a disaster, right, in the bleep show that game was, and they went out and topped it. They said, watch this, bucko, and went out and lost by seven runs on Tuesday evening. Casey Mize gets popped. That was kind of the beginning of the end right away. When did you think the game was over? I think that's kind of a, a really telling thing, right? Um, I, I'm curious when, as a fan, right, when did you think the game was over? Was it after the first inning when it was 2 nothing? They ended up scoring three runs, so that's probably not true. But maybe some people thought that, right? You get popped for two in the first. We're not going to score the rest of the day. Bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. I think most people thought it was over after the second inning when it was six to nothing. But I think pretty much everybody was off board after the third inning (laughs) when it was eight to nothing. Tigers obviously scored three in the top of the fourth. That was the only three runs they scored all game. I... What went wrong? Um, Pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. Not a whole lot went right, believe it or not, in a 10-3 to loss. And just before we get into the game itself, let's talk about the, you know, kind of where you're at in the season and what this series means. We said going into this series that it was a pretty important one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I I think a lot of people kind of realize that. I think a a pretty large part of the fan base looked at this and went, this is, if you don't want to use the word important, it's a good test, right? It's good to to gauge where the Tigers are at. Because the Royals lost over 100 games last year. We're terrible, right? But I've gotten off to a really good start this season. And... You had an opportunity to go line up decently well against a division rival and go try to, I mean, like I said, going into the series, just win one of the first two games and you could at least set yourself up Tarek Skubal game three, right? The nice safety blanket. Every trip through the rotation. Pull the, pull the emergency cord. <laughs> Tarek Skubal time. Please stop the losing. And not only could you not win one of the first two games, they were uncompetitive. You got pumped in both get both games. Got outscored, what is that, six to eighteen combined in those two games? Absolute disaster. And now, a Royals team that, again, lost over 100 games last year is now, what, 12 games? 12, 13 games over 500? 
is in the thick of the of, of the quote unquote race. It's May. There's not really a division race right now, but you get my point. Toward the top of the divisions, the division in the standings. And you've now slid to two games under 500. Now, again, the, the reassuring part of this is that you do have Tarek Skubal going in game three. The issue is they have Cole Reagans. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's not bad. I'm not sure I really trust our offense to, to light up one of the better young arms that the sport has to offer. So we'll see. I watched a game once. I was in attendance for it. I watched a game once where the Detroit Tigers, Tarek Skubal was on the bump. They played the Oakland Athletics, the historically bad Oakland Athletics, in Comerica Park at home after a, a road stretch in which they had won a lot of games and really excited a lot of people. Came home, Tarek Skubal absolutely shoved one of his first starts back from injury, if not his first, but one of one of the his first starts back. And they lost one to nothing in 10 innings. Couldn't score the Manfred runner. And the only run they gave up was the Manfred runner. So I'm not exactly oozing with optimism that just because Scooble's on the mound, it's a guaranteed win. That being said, he's six to zero on the season. I don't think he has a loss to his name in quite some time. But the Kansas City Royals just absolutely smoked you. They lit you up like a Christmas tree. Pumped in two games. Outclassed, outmatched, bullied. Whatever saying you want to use, right? They did that. So even if, is my point, right? We all know Tarek Skubal's awesome. Even if you win this game, 2-1, to 3-1, to one, whatever it ends up being. Are you going to leave this series and go, well, I'm optimistic about this team going forward? I, 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 this was a tough one. Really, really, really tough one. Not this game. Like, it was, wasn't a close game. You got destroyed. This series has been brutal to watch. A team that lost over 100 games last year, made some additions in the offseason, called up a lot of homegrown talent, just absolutely smacked you in the face. Okay, let's talk about what went wrong in this ballgame. It's an awful long list. We'll do all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Prize Picks. Look, a little bit of a doom and gloom episode, okay? Not a great ball game. Prize Picks is where it's at, though, and it makes the action of watching baseball so much more enjoyable, right? We're in the thick of things at this point, so don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond to your prize picks entries, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs. You would have done pretty well on that if you took more in first inning runs in this ball game, I would imagine. But you can take your pick of more or less for all of these stats and add them to your prize picks entry today. Also, be sure to get in on all the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a whole new level during basketball's postseason. Absolutely electric first game of the Eastern Conference Finals. A lot of fun action to get in on with prize picks in that series. I'm sure the Western Conference Finals will be just as fun and on top of all that you have all reliable regular season baseball every single day uh and there's a lot of fun stuff over at prize picks with that again strikeouts for starting pitchers is such a fun one that i talk about every day because 
It is genuinely a part of my daily routine at this point. So be sure to download the app today and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's LOCKDOWNMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your segment two of Locked On Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back tomorrow recapping the series finale against the Kansas City Royals. Hopefully a win. Uh, get back on track here as we head into a series against the Blue Jays and, then of course, any other things going on around the organization. Also, be sure to check out Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day, bringing you the biggest stories without all of maybe the screaming that Fox Sports and ESPN gives you on a daily basis. So subscribe to Locked On Sports Today, like I said, on YouTube or for free in the Amazon Fire TV channels app. All righty. Tigers lose 10 to 3 at the hands of the Kansas City Royals. They're now 23 and 25 on the season. What went wrong in this game? An awful lot. Uh, Spencer Torkelson 0 for again. Uh, he did have a walk in this ball game, but goes 0 for, came up in a couple of opportunities to drive in runs, did absolutely nothing with them. He's now hitting 218 on the season with a 630 OPS, just cannot time up a fastball. For the life of a man, I uh, really he he can't. I uh, that that's great that he hit uh you know the ninety one mile an hour fastball down the middle in Arizona out. That's awesome. On a consistent basis, it, it's it's just he can't square up a fastball. Hard to be a really good major league hitter when you can't square up a fastball, man. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that. I'm sure he's going to continue making adjustments. Hopefully, that's something. That happens uh, as the season goes along because he's not going anywhere. They're not going to send him down. They're not going to cut him or anything. He's going to get at bats. They're going to see it through. Um, but but right now it, it's looking bleak. I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, it's it, it's not looking awesome. Uh, Kerry Carpenter, I guess, over, but that's the last person on the offense that we should be criticizing right now. Um, Mark Hanna continues. He had a walk and, and scored a run on that, but continues to struggle. In the month of May, Riley Green, 0 for 240 average, 801 OPS. He's about another 0 for away from that OPS dipping below 800. He has really been struggling in the month of May. Uh, I mean, pick your poison, dog. Uh, Carson Kelly, 0 for. Uh, we can't get any offensive production out of catcher. Zach McKinstry played shortstop. That's great. It wasn't Javi Baez. His OPS is very similar to Javi Baez. He has a 539 OPS. I think Javi's around 510. I, I mean, golly, you just go down the list and it, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Again, you just look at, you just look at the Royals and incredible talent in Bobby Wood Jr. What a, what a unbelievable game. He had phenomenal talent, going to be really fun to watch, going to terrorize this division, and I'm sure the Detroit Tigers for many, many years to come. Um, he, he's one of the bright young stars in this sport. Vinny Pasquantino, again, got off to a little slow start, but is still a, a really good hitter. Salvador Perez, I am so tired of, but continues to defy logic and, and continues to, to do really well. But, I, I mean, you know, you play the OPS game with the bottom four hitters of their lineup. 547, 577, 518, 621. Teams 31 and 19. It's because the people in the middle of their freaking lineup actually drive people in. It's because the players that they thought and leaned on going into the season, they thought they were going to lean on, that they knew they had to lean on to be successful. The players that, that can drive the baseball, can hit the ball hard. The, the players that can drive runs in. The, the the good players on their offense that they knew going into the season they were going to have to rely on actually are performing. Half of their lineup has OPSs 621 or lower in this ballgame. Their leadoff hitter, 737 OPS. Vinny, 719, I just sung his praises. 
They have two guys with OPSs over 738. But those are 908 and 964. And again, Vinny's a darn good hitter too. They talked about it on the broadcast, man. The top four in this lineup absolutely pumped the Detroit Tigers in this game. You want to know the difference between a really good team and a really <laughs> and, a, and a team that's been sliding in the month of May? There's there's no consistency in this Detroit Tigers offense. There's no one you 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 look at and you rely on and you lean on on a nightly basis. Carpenter's been your best hitter this year. He had a two week stretch early in the month of May. Where, where he wasn't figuring out, and he was sliding hard. Riley Green has been dreadful in May. Mark Hanna, been even worse in May. Wenzel Perez made his Major League debut three weeks ago. Talking in circles at this point. we got to move on. I'm sorry. So, offense continues to struggle, but... Uh, the reason that you were behind the eight ball in this game was because of Casey Mize. His ERA went up, I think, a full run in this game. I'm pretty sure it was 3-5 going into the game. It's now 4-5-7, so over, actually, a whole run. Goes one and two-thirds, nine hits, six earned runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Obviously gave up the absolute moonshot to Bobby Witt Jr. as well. You know, I, I tweeted this out, one of the only things I, I posted about this game. Um, the last thing that this team needed was a short outing from a starting pitcher. You do not have an off day until Monday. You haven't had an off day since last Thursday. That's a week and a half without an off day. Um, your starting pitcher had to leave before the third inning was over. Just on Tuesday night, or on Monday night rather, sorry. And that's why Tyler Holton had to pitch three innings. Three and a third, over three innings. Let's break down the bullpen, actually. No, let's finish Mize. I need to, I need to focus here. I'm sorry. There's really not too much to say about Mize, though, to be completely honest with you. Um, uh, one of the biggest issues in his entire Major League career has been an inability to get swings and misses. We've talked about it at nauseum since I have been the host of this show. We talked about it before his injury. We talked about it uh, in spring training, right? The fastball looked better, getting some more swings and misses, hopefully. We've talked about it a lot this year. Um, he tried to throw the curveball at, at one point just to like keep people off balance in this game. Uh, I think it's kind of like a like a safety valve option. Um, I, I <laughs> could, couldn't miss bats. Could not miss bats. And that has, again, been a, been a thing his entire Major League career. Um, and, and look, like he, he wasn't a bad pitcher before the surgery, right? He, he was not some garbage pitcher. He had a sub-4 ERA. He wasn't terrible. Um, pretty solid. But it was all, the strikeout numbers are, were astronomically low. Go look at the K rate that Casey Mize was putting up that year. Not a lot of strikeouts. Not a lot of swing and miss in that arm. Um, and, and the hope was that coming back from the injury, fully healthy, the best he's ever felt right since being drafted, um, all of these reports and like the, the uptick in the fastball velo and, and hopefully an improved slider, et cetera, et cetera. And so far we just haven't gotten to see that that hasn't come to fruition. We saw it a little bit in spring training at points, but that's spring training. Again, we talk about all the time, how little, Spring training stats matter, but when it's all you have, you're going to overreact to it a little bit. My point being, this start, you got popped. Casey Mize is not this bad of a pitcher. He's not going to go sub two innings and give up six runs every single time he goes out there. He'll probably go out there and have some nice starts. He had a 3-5 ERA going into this outing, right? He'll, he'll probably have plenty of nice starts. Hopefully, he can stay healthy the rest of the season. But the outlook on him going forward, the future of Casey Mize and the opinion that people are going to have on Mize going forward will will never get higher. That ceiling will never raise if he does not prove that he can get swings and misses consistently at the major league level. It's as simple as that. And this was a, a 
uh, a really dramatic like swing to the other side of the pendulum, right? Where like every hit found grass and, and he just, you know, like that happens sometimes. That's baseball. Again, Casey Mize is not this bad of a pitcher whatsoever. But the difference between, okay, Mize can be a solid, you know, four-ish ERA pitch to contact, you know, pitch to weak contact type of pitcher, you know, in, in the, the bottom half of a rotation going forward versus maybe he can actually crack back into that, you know, top half of a rotation ceiling that was put on him on draft night when he was the number one overall pick is going to be his ability to get swings and misses. And so far as a major leaguer, he just hasn't. Okay, cool. That, that's really all, all, all I have to say at uh, again, this just went so poorly. Like he's not this bad. This isn't, a, you know, he's not going to replicate this every time he goes out there. He's a much, much better pitcher than he showed tonight. Um, but the reason why he he has some games like this is because he he can't get swings and misses. Okay, let's keep the ball rolling. I do want to talk about the bullpen, and we'll talk about like pretty much the only thing that went right in this game. On the other side of this as well, and then we'll really quickly preview uh, what's going to be uh, one of the bigger pitching matchups in baseball on Wednesday. And the Tigers get to be a part of that, which is kind of cool, even given all of the, the negativity that's uh, that's going around here right now. So uh, we will get into all of that right after this. Got to talk to you all about our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships and also it keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for, and with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. I appreciate you all so much for tuning in, as always. Talking about what went wrong still, which is most things so far. Uh, and, you know, that, uh, that that trend is not exactly going to change too terribly much here. Um, so, the bullpen. You know, overall... I have been a lot more lenient on the pen recently than I think most people probably have. Uh, I think they're put in very unfair situations consistently where this offense gives them no, no support. They have to hold on to a one or two run lead for dear life. And if they don't, there's no chance the offense is going to come back at the end of the game either. Right. That is just such a, a difficult thing for a bullpen to have, you know, walk the line of perfection, essentially night in and night out. Um, but we are at a point now where I, this bullpen is not bad. I, I, I don't think that this is like some garbage bullpen. The issue is the same problem that we talked about on this show going into the season. And the first two weeks of the year, I took it back and I went, if Jason Foley is pumping 99 to 101 mile an hour sinkers, then I take back. The point I had in March that some people pushed back on at the time as well, which was this team has a lot of really good middle relievers, but they don't have a, a true highest leverage reliever. I don't think Jason Foley is that. I, I hate even having this conversation because I love Jason Foley more than like anybody. Like he was, you know, when, when he was first like cracking into the majors of a couple of years ago, like we – we, we really like pounded the drum for how awesome he was on this show at the time. And um, I, I don't want to like switch up and, I, and I'm not. Again, I think that Jason Foley, I know he had the rough outing tonight. Obviously, his ERA is now up to two, four, five on the season. Um, and I, 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 I genuinely love him and think that 29 other teams would do uh, anything to have an automatic ground ball like that out of their bullpen. Um, the the issue is, again, swings and misses. And when he was pumping 100 with movement, he was getting some swings and misses and getting some strikeouts. And that's why he didn't allow a run for the first like two or three weeks of the season. 
that is changing because his velocity has plummeted. And it, it to call it concerning would be an understatement. Uh, the, the home run he gave up, I'm pretty sure it was like 96, which in today's day and age of baseball, it, you know, a 96 mile an hour sinker, which is not a swing and miss pitch, right? That is a pitch to contact pitch by nature and shape. Um, a, a 96 mile an hour sinker being what you throw, you know, 60 to 80% of the time, it, that ain't a closer, baby. It's not a closer in 2024. And that is the, the point that I was trying to articulate going into the season, right? Is like, I, I am very concerned that this is going to be a, a bullpen with a lot of solid pieces, but nobody that you trust in the highest leverage. And I think that right now, and I'm not saying this will last throughout the year, right? Uh, there's a lot of, of nebs and flows and, and, and changes that happen throughout the course of the season. We still have over 100 games left. But as it stands right now on May 22nd, who is the person that you trust the most in the ninth inning? You know? Like, that's why I, I was confused when everybody was given Hinch heat. What was that? A couple of weeks ago when Foley pitched in like the sixth inning or whatever instead of the ninth. And they lost the game. I was like, I don't know what fully you, everyone else has been seeing lately, but like, I don't mind that really. It's tough. Your your bullpen is is. Look, man. I, again, like I I think you still have good pieces in here. I don't think this is like some some catastrophic abysmal pen. But you you build a bullpen around the highest leverage reliever, right? the closer, if you will, if you're a traditionalist. That that <laughs> your bullpen can only be as good as your success in highest leverage moments. And who is the Tigers reliever in highest leverage? And, and like I don't I don't mean who is it today, right? If you're like, oh well today I'd give the ball to Alex Lang. Fine. I mean, who do you have confidence in that's going to be in that spot consistently throughout the course of the season? The rest of 2024? I don't know. I don't think that there is an answer to that. And that's a problem. That's a massive problem. So Foley gets gets roughed up, obviously gives up the home run. Tyler Holton has to pitch three and a third, which I'm not sure he's ever done, uh, at least as a starter. Uh, used to be, a, or as a reliever, rather, he used to be a starter uh, back when he was younger. Three nine one ERA now on the season. Um, I, I had no issues with really what Holden was doing out there. And then Joey Wentz has three strikeouts. Fine, I, I didn't think he looked particularly good in this outing yet again. Shelby Miller throwing a, a bullpen session. We talked about how Joe Shelby Miller looked before he got hurt. Hopefully it was it was part of the injury is why he was struggling. And if he's fully healthy, he can come back and, and perform and look a little bit more like he did with the Dodgers last year. But Joey Wentz very quickly, ERA, for as much as we were hyping him up the first, you know, six weeks of the season, ERA is back up to pushing four. It's a slippery slope. When it rains, it pours. It that you know this really is a snowball effect. And for for everything that was going right early, I mean, clearly this offense is not good enough. Where if you're not getting exceptional starting pitching and good to great bullpen play, th this team is not going to keep its head above water, man. It's not, unless the offense turns it around. And we have seen nothing to lead us to believe that that will happen. I'm not trying to be like season is over. It's not what I'm saying. Again, I've reiterated that a million times. There's still so much baseball left to be played. Um, so much. And so, but that being said, you also got to look in the mirror. It doesn't mean just ignore your problems. The bullpen has been a wreck the last week and a half, two weeks. Train wreck. Your starting pitchers are showing some cracks. And your offense hasn't been good all year and still isn't. <laughs> the 
There is a lot that needs to turn around here. Silver lining, if there is one, is that Colt Keith had another phenomenal game. And that is three unbelievable performances in the last like four or five games. And that's great. And I love Colt Keith. And this is one of the reasons why I really wanted him to stay at the major league level, despite all of the pressure to send him down and despite the really slow start, he needed to get major league timing down, right? You know, Parker Meadows is like mashing in his last 10 games in Toledo. I've said it a lot there. This is maybe the biggest that the gap between triple a pitching and major league pitching has ever been in the history of baseball. There's a legitimate argument that that's true. Velo is just so much different at those two levels. So I'm hoping that this is a sign of things to come. The fun part is, and this is, again, this is things that went well. Matt Beerling had a decent day too. We can throw him in there, I guess, but The fun part about Colt Keith is that this is the tip of the iceberg. If you have watched any ABs from this dude in the minors, you you understand what I'm saying. This is not like, oh, this dude's just going to hit a bunch of singles all the time. When he starts lifting the ball, he's hitting it hard now. Once he starts lifting the baseball and that angle really gets ironed out, that's when the real party is going to start. Like this is this is this is the the appetizer, right? And if there's anything to leave this ball game with, right? If if you're looking for any sort of of you know optimism or or <laughs> serotonin to grab onto, it would be that Colt Keith has been looking really solid lately, and and hopefully this is a sign of of things to come because he has been seeing the ball really really well. Today, afternoon game. So today, as you're listening to this, uh, 2-10 start time in Kansas City. The Tigers play the Kansas City Royals for a series finale. I cannot, expre- I cannot express how important I think this game is. Please win this ball game. Please. Um, if you lose this one, you, you're going to be on a four-game losing streak with a sweep against a division rival heading home, who you, which you, where you play worse than over, the, like historically, over the last three years. You you need to win this game. This needs to be, you know, put the tourniquet on, stop the bleeding, stop the skid, get back on track. You can get to be a game under 500. The Blue Jays have been underperforming this season. You're at home, four games set reset on the way home, come off a win, and hopefully carry some sort of momentum into the weekend. This team is really in a spot. It's unfair to Tarek Skubal, where it, they literally cannot afford to lose Skubal starts. Because if they do, you could very quickly, like that, be five losses in a row. They, they can't afford to lose when it's his turn in the rotation because who knows when the next win is going to come. Jack Flaherty's been great. He just got his first win in Arizona. (laughs) He's been phenomenal. Reese Olsen is 0-6, 0-5 with like a 2-2 ERA. You literally cannot afford to lose when Scoobles on the mound. So don't. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. Shots to every day is the two tune in. Every day, we will be back tomorrow. I really do appreciate you all. If if you tune in after those two games, you deserve to be financially compensated. And I can't help you with that, unfortunately. But I I appreciate you so much, for real. Um, yeah, the fact that this show still gets support, even when the Tigers are doing modern-day Tigers things, is uh, means the absolute world to me. It really does. And I know that I'm agitated and upset and sad. (laughs) And and the the vibes on this show are not exactly super positive and fun and uplifting. Um, But uh, I'm a fan first, still forever and always, of this team. And dang it, I just want to win. 
and I'm sure you do too. So we'll be back tomorrow, hopefully recapping one. All right. Peace and love. Gwyneth Therapy's dope. I'll catch you all then, baby. Go Tigers.